Hi, I'm Linda, the crazy butterfly lady, and I'm here to talk to you about my butterflies. Okay, this is a monarch caterpillar that I put in my cage. And this is a male monarch. They have these little black dots. The females don't have that. So, and the black swallowtail. This is the black swallowtail butterfly, and this is the black swallowtail caterpillar. And these are pictures from your garden? Yes. Yes, and the ones that I released. And here's some of the activity in one of our cages of the butterflies, and you can see the, that's just, some of the bunch that's in the top of the cage. Is that this cage over here? One of these cages, yeah. I don't know which one it was. Probably that one. And this is two monarchs that we released that were in the grass. That's about it. Now I don't know if you want to try to get a picture of these chrysalis in the cage or not. Okay, but first can we see what your garden looks like now in early April? This is a spice bush and spice bush swallowtails lay their eggs on this plant. We have several butterfly bushes here, winter berry bushes, and I plant flowers in here. We have swamp milkweed planted in this bed right here, and we're gonna be planting common milkweed in these fences. We got milkweed plugs from Monarch Watch. And of course, there'll be flowers in there eventually. Here's another one of our butterfly bushes for the butterflies. I deadhead the flowers and you're supposed to prune them in the spring. I don't know if we will or not. We might just let it go to see what happens. This will be a bronze fennel when it starts to bloom, and that's where I get my black swallowtail caterpillars off of. Okay, we have more butterfly bushes along here. There's also common milkweed planted in here. And this is my greenhouse where I start my flowers for the spring and summer. I have my hollyhocks coming up. Um, my Mexican sunflowers. This is a pipe vine. It attracts the pipe vine swallowtail and they lay their eggs on there and eat the leaves. I can... Okay, these are black swallowtail chrysalis that I'm wintering over. One's a spice bush, and I collected these caterpillars 
in this over at the end of summer and they'll emerge come spring. And while I have the cage here, I may as well mention too, if anybody decides to make their own cages, everything has to be very tight because caterpillars will not stay on the floor on the milkweed. They travel a lot and go up and down the cage and they can escape through tiny little holes. So you have to make sure that everything's nice and tight. Here's a bee on my Mexican sunflower. There's my Mexican sunflower bush. There's a sunflower. There's some of my butterflies. There's some of my caterpillars in the cages. There's a black swallowtail caterpillar. There, this is this is a spice bush caterpillar. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool because it looks like it has two eyes. Let me share that one with you. So Linda, can I do a little interview with you just sitting there? <laughs> and it just uh Thought, I just would like to ask you a couple of things. Um, let me just set this up. Hopefully, I know the answer. <laughs> well, it's what I, well, I just want to ask you, like how you got started. You know. How did you get interested in butterflies? When was that? How long? Ah, uh, 2006. I started raising monarchs, and so far I released 1,355. I think somebody introduced me to it. Uh, they had caterpillars and going into a chrysalis, and I just thought it was absolutely amazing, so I started raising my own. <laughs> That's a couple hundred a year. Huh. Well, you have good years and you have bad years. One year I had no monarchs whatsoever. Um, at the beginning, I didn't have my own milkweed, so that meant traveling to find places that had milkweed, looking for butterflies and milkweed. Um, the one good thing about common milkweed is you can keep it. If you pick milkweed leaves, you can put it in a baggie after you washed it and dried it. You can put it in a baggie and keep it in the crisper drawer and it'll last for over a week fine in the refrigerator. So if it's a rainy day and you don't want to go out and get leaves, you can just go in your refrigerator and get your leaves out and you're good to go. Well, how did you start growing milkweed? Milkweed's hard to grow, right? It's hard to grow. It's very hard to grow. We first bought our first plugs from Monarch Watch. Um, we bought two trays of them, and it did fantastic. And I don't know if over the years or the ground or whatever, but they kind of went to the wayside now. Swamp milkweed's good, and that's easy to grow, and butterfly weed's easy to grow, but those plants have narrower leaves, and the common milkweed has wide weed, wide leaves, so it's much easier to feed them, because caterpillars eat a lot. Um, they'll eat so much in a day, and they move around a lot and they eat a lot and they poop a lot and you gotta clean out the cages con well I clean them out once a day and I miss the cages 
if it's real hot and humid. And then I also have a cover that I put over top of the uh, plexiglass if it's a real sunny day so that the heat doesn't go into the cage. And because caterpillars have tiny little holes along each side of their body to breathe from. And if they get too much moisture, they can drown. If they don't get enough, they can dry up. The reason I raise caterpillars is because there's so much out there. I mean, if you really look at a milkweed plant, there's ladybug beetles on them. I found a slug on one. Um, there's ants all over it because of the aphids. The aphids draw the ants and ants will eat the eggs of the caterpillar. And there's a lot of things that will eat small caterpillars, even bigger caterpillars will eat the small caterpillars, not realizing that they're there and they just munch away and eat. And um, I just raise them so that I can release them and then they'll make more, lay, get more eggs and lay more eggs and then there's more caterpillar and more butterflies around. A female monarch can lay 1,600 eggs in a lifetime, and their lifespan's only like three months. So um, I figure whatever I can save out there, I'm gonna save it. Because there's too many things that can, a wasp can, kind of sting it, but they're actually putting their egg inside the caterpillar. And the caterpillar can last a long time. It can even go up to go into a chrysalis before this egg emerges and destroys the monarch caterpillar. So there's a lot that can go wrong. And like even these black swallowtails, this spring when I bring them out, a wasp might emerge from it because a wasp laid an egg in it. And then once that egg emerges from the in the chrysalis, it'll eat what's inside the chrysalis and a wasp emerges. That caught me by surprise because I didn't know about it until I did some reading. You're not always successful, but there are many books to help you out. This book's Milkweed, Monarchs, and more, and that tells you a lot that goes on with milkweed. This book, The Life Cycles of Butterflies, is real interesting. It shows you the single egg laid under a leaf of the milkweed and the caterpillar, and when they go into the J form, then they start forming their chrysalis in the back of their head here, a green chrysalis, and they wiggle and jiggle until they're inside and they liquefy themselves and then they hang for a while. Then they will turn black and kind of clear so you can see the actual butterfly. And some butterflies lay more than one egg. Silvery checker spot lays several eggs. And on milkweed, a tussock moth will lay several eggs on a milkweed plant and they will eat caterpillars, small caterpillars, they will eat the egg and they will devour a milkweed plant. So they're not a good thing to have. But um, this book has lots of information in it. Um, it tells you how long they're in a chrysalis and how long they're in an egg and how long they're in a caterpillar and how long the butterflies live. And they have pictures here of caterpillars of different butterflies so you can identify them. And it explains to you about parasites and the wintering stage. And it gives you, there you can see the chrysalis, the butterfly and the chrysalis. And when the butterflies emerge, their wings are folded and wet and they hang from the chrysalis until they're dry. And then they start flittering their wings. And you don't release, there's the chrysalis on the caterpillar. And uh, 
don't release them on rainy days and it should be at least 60 degrees to release them and this book milkweed monarchs and more tells you a lot of things that can go wrong and here's a picture of a tachnid fly which isn't good and they drop maggots and they can harm the caterpillars also Caterpillars really have a lot of enemies that people don't realize. That's why I start raising them as early as I can to save as many as I can. My, my emergency kit in my car in the summertime is this bag. With this bag to put milkweed leaves in and then I have this jar with holes in the lid that I can put caterpillars or eggs in this jar and bring home and raise more monarchs. <laughs> That's how crazy I am. There's a lot of people that are raising butterflies, not only monarchs, but black swallowtails, painted ladies. Um, I just started with the spice bush, but you can't, we've had that spice bush for years and just the other year we found our first caterpillar so you can't and even with my monarch the in 2013 there were no monarchs around and i had no caterpillars no eggs no nothing so it all depends on where the butterflies are and where they decide to lay their eggs and with the pipe vine uh i know somebody that had a pipe vine and they had so many caterpillars it devoured their whole big plant and then she had to give the caterpillars to somebody else that had more pipe vine flowers, plants, so they could continue to live. And since then, well, I just got that pipe vine, so I didn't, this last year was the first year, but if a pipe vine uh, butterfly isn't around, they're not gonna lay an egg on it, so. And, Farmers and that, they'll cut down their milkweed. Um, but I do have a list. I have a list. Well, being on Jack's backyard, I get a lot of requests for plants to plant for butterflies. And I have a list here of the host plants for the various butterflies. Um, zebra swallowtails go on the pawpaw tree. Uh, giant swallowtails on prickly ash and rue. Rue's a good thing for black swallowtails also. But red spotted purple, they lay their eggs on willows. Um, spring ashers will lay their eggs on dogwood trees. Painted ladies will lay their eggs on hollyhock. There's a whole list of different butterflies and what they lay their egg on. And then I also was mailing out a list of nectar plants for the butterflies and a list of plants for the hummingbirds and also a list telling how long swallowtails are in an egg, four to 10 days a chrysalis three to four weeks, no, 10 to 20 days, and a butterfly six to 14 days. And it's just on different butterflies, checker spots. And one thing that most people don't know is the smaller butterflies prefer the lower flowers to feed on, to get nectar from, and the taller flowers, the bigger butterflies, go and get their nectar from. I try to grow a plant called the hummingbird mint, which is good for hummingbirds, but uh, little skippers like to go on there and get their nectar. So, but it's a small plant and has little flowers on it, so that's perfect for the little skippers.
make sure the mother of the monarch will take care of <laughs> The monarchs come and go. Um, there's a lot of butterflies that are at the different flowers and bushes that we plant. But um, it's just, I have cabbage whites right now, but the weather is too cold for butterfly, <laughs> majority of butterflies. Start seeing the butterflies. I've seen monarchs as early as late June, but that's unusual. Usually it's July when you first start seeing them or see eggs or see caterpillars. Mm -hmm. It's usually July. I did have them in June already, but I guess that was a rare. Must have been the weather and temperature and all that. Okay. Great. So, um, what can people do to help butterflies? My suggestion is, I think everybody should at least raise at least one butterfly in their lifetime because they'll be amazed at what the process is to go through. Now, my whole idea is a lot of people will plant butterfly bushes, which is fine, and they, want, and they get a lot of butterflies, but you should plant host plants for some of the butterflies so they can lay their eggs on the host plant and reproduce and make more butterflies. That's my personal opinion. Host plants and nectar plants so that there's more butterflies. And I really encourage anybody to start raising butterflies, whether it be monarchs, black swallowtails, because you'll just be amazed at the whole process they go through and what all happens and how much they eat, and just how they go through all their whole process of liquefying themselves into a chrysalis. It's, it's just amazing. And you figure the more you raise, the more butterflies are gonna be around, because you raise them, they go out and lay more eggs, and then you'll have a lot more butterflies. That's my opinion. <laughs> Maybe I will. Maybe, like I said, my sister has done this. She, she talks about it all the time. It's and it's it's an ex. Like I was ready to give up a long time ago, and when Harold Lebeau the one year gave me monarchs, and I thought, now how am I gonna? You know, I didn't want to just release them in my yard for them to lay eggs on my stuff because I thought they might not hang around. So that's why I put a stalk of milkweed in a cage and had them in there for, I think I had them in there for two days. And they laid eggs and then I released them and they laid eggs on my plants. So it's just a great process. I don't know. It's just something, I can't get it out of my system. <laughs> I can't give up. I guess it's nature. But just to even watching an egg uh, caterpillar emerge, um, caterpillar emerge from the egg. I mean, they're so tiny. I mean, it's just a little sliver when I find them, and when they they molt like four times or so in their lifetime as a caterpillar, and they spin as silk with their pro legs to hang on to while they're molting. And um, that's why a lot of times when you clean out their cage, you will fit, find strands of silk. That's because they um, do silk so that they can hang on to whatever they're on at the time. So it's, it's really interesting to watch the whole process. And then going into the chrysalis, that is simply amazing to me. How you can get a chrysalis at the back of their head, they hang upside down in a J, and then they get the chrysalis. And really, actually, they wiggle and jiggle till they get into the chrysalis. 
and then they just are liquefied for a while before they start forming their butterfly form. And that's what you have over here, a liquefied one? No, these are all, these are liquefied already. They already went into that stage. But it's, it's just great to watch. And even when they emerge from their chrysalis, their wings are all folded and it, and they're wet. And then as the wings start to dry, then they start to open up their wings further. And then they hang from the chrysalis until their wings are fairly dry. And then they'll start flitting around in the cage. And once they're completely dry, then you can release them so they can go out and lay more eggs. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to say? No, just come back in the spring, <laughs> in the summer when there's flowers blooming and well, you know, I have my caterpillars. We're hoping to have an Earth Day celebration at City Park in Reading in June. And, you know, maybe you'd uh, be able, maybe you'd like to come out and show your uh, uh, caterpillars and And I always, are you ready? I am, yeah. I always use this type of container to um, put my flowers in because caterpillars do not stay stationary. So if, if you have a cage that has caterpillars and butterflies in it, I put a bouquet of flowers in here with this lid on because caterpillars will have a tendency to crawl up the side of a vase and go in there and drown. So if you have something like this, the caterpillars won't drown. Because <laughs> if you just put a vase in there, they'll crawl up the side and go in it and drown because they're not too smart. <laughs> but I just use something like this put a bouquet of flowers in there and put it in the cage for the butterflies. That way, if caterpillars are in the cage, they, they can crawl up the side, but they're not going to go in there and drown because it's sealed and the flowers are in here. But caterpillars move around, and if you have just an open vase, they'll go in the vase and drown and die. So I always, it's crude, but... <laughs> Find that out the hard way. Uh, not really. Okay, good. Um, I, I just, I know how the caterpillars move around a lot and I didn't want them to drown. So that's why I use this. And then I have a bouquet of flowers on my deck in case a butterfly is going to be emerged. And then I can just put them on the flowers out there if they're ready to be released. And a lot of times they'll fly right into the pine tree. So besides flowers that I keep in here, I also will put a sprig of pine tree in there because they'll go to that and cling to that. And because butterflies need nectar right away when they're released. So, so that's what I do. Yeah, they can get nectar from the pine.